Forward head posture is not caused by tight muscles. And people trying to fix those tight muscles and address their neck in isolation is why they're not seeing progress. Many times we see chin tucks and banded retraction exercises recommended to fix forward head posture, but this is addressing the symptom and not the genuine root cause. In this video, I'm gonna finally help you understand what the true root cause is and what you can do to address it. Let's dig into the science. There are two main things to consider with forward head posture, but one is the most important above anything else, and that is breathing. You see, the position and curvature of our neck has a direct influence on the position, size, and function of our airway. Our body is primarily concerned with staying alive, and so breathing is a massive component of that. And there's a lot of research that suggests that if you don't breathe, you don't stay alive. The second thing to consider is that the body is going to organize its spine curves so that way it can keep an even center of gravity down the midline of the body. This is something that a lot of people don't consider when it comes to posture. So a lot of the times with people that have a forward head, something else within the lower segments of the spine is tilted in a given direction forward or backwards, and that causes the head itself to go forward to accommodate that body trying to find that even center of gravity. For example, if the pelvis tilts forward, that usually causes causes the upper back to round and that causes the head to go forward to accommodate that, again, even center of gravity. You can also have a pelvis that's tilted underneath you, causing your head to shove forward so that way you can keep yourself stacked and upright against gravity. But the reason why this typically happens in the first place is because the body is seeking a compensatory strategy to breathe in the presence of a diaphragm that's not doing its job very well. You see, every time we breathe in, our diaphragm and intercostal muscles should be working to do their job to help us expand our rib cage and effectively breathe with as little restraint restriction as possible. Now, some people just at birth get dealt a bad hand and they have a limited airway size at birth. And this can promote all sorts of problems like forward head posture just naturally. Other people can have issues with their sinuses and that can cause a restriction and blockage in their ability to properly breathe through their nose. These are your same people. And I'm sure this will resonate with some of you that got a lot of sore throats when they were a kid, have constant issues with congestion. And also they got a lot of ear infections. These people commonly have an issue with their airway. And finally, a big one is your tongue. If your tongue doesn't work very well to rest at the roof of your mouth when you breathe, or it doesn't work very well when you swallow, this is big because as we grow up through adolescence and as our face develops, our tongue and the pressure against the roof of the mouth helps expand our jaw and our overall cranial structure, and it helps properly get that airway into a nice size and position. But people that have that retruded jaw and that open mouth breather position and posture within their face, those people oftentimes have an issue with their airway. They oftentimes don't fully develop it. And these people very commonly have forward head posture. If this is resonating with you and this is making sense to you and you haven't considered forward head posture in this context before, leave a comment down below about what you think. And also don't forget to like and subscribe. So what I'm trying to say is that there are a ton of different reasons why someone can have forward head posture. But at the end of the day, it ultimately comes down to an inability for them to utilize their airway. And also their diaphragm isn't working very well and their neck muscles are kicking on via compensation to help them manage the ability to use their airway and expand their rib cage. So what we're gonna do in this video is I'm gonna show you some exercises that will help address the true root cause, which is to utilize our diaphragm, expand our rib cage, not use the neck. However, if you're someone that resonates with maybe that mouth breathing strategy, maybe you have a lot of congestion all the time and a lot of sore throats, or maybe you know you have poor tongue posture, things like that, you want to see a qualified practitioner that can help you with these issues because what I'm gonna show you in this video will not help you very much until you get those things addressed. Then this video will be very helpful for you. But I recommend seeing a qualified myofunctional therapist or someone that specializes in the airway if you're someone that resonates with what I said earlier. The goal is two things. First, we want to help open up the rib cage, learn how to breathe without using our neck. That is absolutely key. Nothing will work until we get that in place first. And then what we're going to do is properly work on recruiting the deep neck flexors, which help pull the neck back into a better posture and position. Many people try to do these, like I mentioned earlier, with exercises like chin tucks or banded retractions, but they do them with terrible form. So I'm gonna show you how to properly do it. 
the first thing we got to do is learn how to breathe without using our neck and improving our diaphragm function in the presence of an open airway. So get in this position with your legs up on a chair or something to where they could be around a 90 degree angle at both your knees and your hips. Grab a small rolled it up hand towel and place it underneath your neck and it should be a size appropriate to which when just resting completely chill, your chin can be passively pointing at the ceiling. Now take your hands and link them on your low rib cage like this. Get a nice sighing open mouth exhale like this with a relaxed jaw. It's not or it's just for about five to 10 seconds. Okay, at the end of that five to 10 second exhale, you should feel your side abs engaged. Not as much your six pack abs, but those oblique side abs. You're going to pause and then you're going to take a two to five second long pause as you place your tongue on the roof of your mouth in a relaxed way, trying to maximize the coverage of your tongue on the roof of your mouth gently. And then you're going to very silently, but fully inhale through your nose, not engaging your neck or losing that side ab tension. So it's full five to 10 second exhale. Side abs engage, pause, tongue on the roof of the mouth for about two to five seconds. Silent, but full inhale. If you do that well, you're going to feel your rib cage expand, your belly expand a little bit, but it's gonna feel like, again, your neck is not engaged. So if you need to go slower on the inhale, that's good. So if you're feeling your neck engaged at all, to any extent whatsoever, it's because you're going too hard or too long on the inhale. If you need to break up your inhale into small sections, that's appropriate. Just make sure that it's nice and slow. Softer and longer is always better than harder and more forceful on either the exhale and the inhale. I want you to practice this for about two minutes of breath cycles, going nice and slow, making sure your neck is disengaged. All right, now here's the progression. Once you can master the first thing, you're going to keep your chin passively pointed at the ceiling. You're gonna reach your arms directly up. You're gonna get a little bit of separation between your shoulder blades and spine into what we call protraction, but you're not gonna let your sternum bone depress or your head lift off of the ground. Chin is passively pointed there. Now, same thing, full nice exhale. Find the side abs, then when you pause and then inhale after that, the inhalation will give you the temptation to slightly have your arms drift back. That's good, let them go back just one to two inches or a few centimeters. Then hold that, do the same thing. Full exhale, pause, inhale, let them drift back a little further. And you're gonna keep going more and more and more until the point where if you were to go back any further, you'd have to shrug your shoulders or your ribs would flare or your low back would come off of the ground. Those things usually happen all at the same time. So let's say my end range is here after like five breaths and I can't go anymore without my ribs flaring or my shoulders shrugging, then that's okay. I'm gonna stop there, go back to the beginning, and now I'm gonna do that for one more set, seeing if I can't go just a little bit deeper. The goal is your hands are facing each other the entire time. Now these exercises should give you some instantaneous results in your ability to utilize your diaphragm, not use your neck, and improve function of your airway. But we have to keep in mind what I said earlier is that different sections of the spine and even the hips can put the spine in a given position, which causes a compensatory curvature of the neck and also the upper back. So we have to appreciate that the hips can have an influence on this as well. So if you want a true total root cause and total body approach that could be individualized to you and your own even asymmetries, check out my beginner body restoration program. It's designed for anyone to be able to do and requires minimal equipment and time per day. You can check that out down below in the description. Now we're going to apply the same breathing strategy, literally the exact same thing to a different position that will help us get more expansion in our chest and some in our upper back as well. So we're gonna place a pillow over some stuff stacked up that's about eh, three to four inches high, or you can just stack multiple pillows up, but you wanna be about this high off of the ground. You're gonna take your elbows and go just below the height of your shoulder like this, and your head is gonna start down, but here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna press through the inside portion of your forearm, elbow, and hand as you lift up a little bit, but don't go so far to the point where your ribs come off of that support right here. You always want your lower ribs supported and slightly pressing into that object right there. And now what you're going to do is you're gonna keep your eyes very slightly up, looking just a couple feet in front of you to make sure your airway's in a good position. And you're gonna do that same exact breathing, full exhale, relaxed jaw, open five to 10 second exhale, 
and then pause after you feel a little bit of side abs. Inhale through your nose after that nice two to five second long pause with the tongue on the roof of the mouth. If you do that right, you're gonna feel your chest expand, your neck is completely relaxed, and a little bit of expansion in your back as well. I want you to do that for about two sets of 10 slow breaths. One more thing, the press is gentle. It's just a little bit of a three out of 10 intensity into the ground. It's not shove yourself up really maximally like this. The question is, is what is the least amount of tension that you can get to still achieve this position. Okay, now we're gonna help open up our chest even more in more of an upright position, but still keep our neck completely relaxed. So what we're gonna do is get in this sort of short seated position about a foot length away from the wall. It'll vary depending on what's comfortable for you. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your hands, place them flat on the ground, find the back of your butt, and then go slightly out to the side, shoulder width apart, and you're gonna keep your hand and palm nice and flat. You're gonna slightly bend your elbows, you're gonna let your chin and head tilt back until it's resting on the wall. You should be completely relaxed, 100% of tension gone within your neck. Now here's the key, keeping your elbows very slightly bent, push through the ground a little bit, and that's going to help engage some muscles very gently in the backside of your shoulder blades. It literally is a one or two out of 10. I cannot overstate how important it is for you to not force it like this. That is going to create way more problems. It is literally a one out of 10, just to right here. Now you're gonna do that same exact breathing. Exhale, fully sighing, five to 10 seconds, relax jaw. Find the side abs, pause. Then as you inhale, you're gonna feel your chest expand. Neck is disengaged. All the while you're keeping that one out of 10 push down. And if you need to get a little further away so that way your head and neck can be relaxed and chill, that's okay. Just don't get so far away to where your back arches and you're doing something like this or so close to where your chin drops like this. I'd recommend doing two sets of 10 slow breath cycles. Okay, now we're gonna finish with an exercise that will work on the muscles to help reposition the head, the neck, and the airway. This is a modification of a chin tuck exercise. I see these all the time done with really bad and poor form because people really overemphasize it and they go way too hard and strong. That's not what we wanna do. So what I recommend is sit in a position where you can feel your sit bones evenly on both sides. You're sitting nice and tall, your sternum is facing straight ahead, it's not depressed or overextended, it's just straight ahead. And your feet and knees are hip width apart. Now make sure you have a very light band around the level of the top of your head. So you're gonna take that band and you're gonna wrap it just below that knob on the back of your head right here, your skull called your occiput, and it's gonna be just above your ears right here. So your ears will help support it. Now you're gonna make sure that you're sitting nice and tall, your chin is up nice and level with the ground and your hands are resting on your thighs. So first, make sure you can feel your sit bones evenly on both sides and you're able to keep your chin up and also your tongue is on the roof of your mouth, just like the pause during the breathing exercises. You want gentle but maximal surface area coverage of your tongue on the roof of your mouth throughout this entire exercise. Now here is all it is. It's just a subtle action, drawing the chin back and it'll naturally depress a little bit. You wanna inhale through your nose very gently as you do this. Exhale through your nose and let your chin come forward. If you feel any movement at the level of the shoulders or below, you are going too much. Do not do that. Stay tall, feeling your sit bones, your sternum facing straight ahead and it's just a subtle movement through your neck and your chin. Again, inhale back, exhale forward through your nose. I recommend doing this for about two to three sets of 10 to 15 slow controlled reps. I recommend doing these exercises at least one time through in the order that you see them in this video. I recommend at least two sets each, more can be better initially, and for the amount of reps that I talk about in each exercise. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.